In Git, we have a fair amount of freedom in how we name our branches. Now, you're probably already familiar with the feature branch prefix, and that's a naming convention that is common in Git flow for naming feature branches. But naming conventions are typically and should be specific to the team doing the work. So each team can decide how it plans to name branches and then stick with that so everyone knows where to look for features or hot fixes or whatever the branch type is that they're looking to locate. Now, Git enforces a small set of naming rules that we must abide by when creating our branches. So before we review the different types of naming conventions that I've seen, let's first look at what Git will even allow us to do. So here are the rules. A branch can be anything you want as long as it doesn't violate the following rules. So branch names cannot include a dot at the beginning of the branch path component. For example, feature and then dot my feature. It's not allowed to have that. It cannot end with dot lock since that is a reserved extension. It cannot have consecutive dots like dot dot or my dot dot feature. It cannot contain any ASCII control characters like a space, a tilde, a caret, or a colon. And it cannot have a question mark, an asterisk, or even an opening square bracket in the name. However, a closing square bracket is oddly allowed, but there's reasons for this because of scripting. And it cannot begin or end with a dot. And of course, we know that is for the reasons that dot actually has a significance in file system naming. And it cannot contain the sequence at symbol and then opening curly brace. And it cannot contain the single character of the at symbol. And finally, it cannot contain a backslash. Now, all of these rules protect the inner workings of Git and how it needs to use branch names inside of code and especially in shell scripts. And if you watched my course, Git Under the Hood, you know there are actually still some shell scripts being used underneath in Git. Now, fortunately, if you break the naming rules, Git will refuse to create the branch and will tell you that it's not a valid branch name. So if I go in here and I say Git branch, and I want to name it feature slash dot feature name like that, you can see that I violated by using the dot. It's going to say it's not a valid branch name. Same thing if I add feature, let's say, at symbol. Now that one looks like it actually worked. Let's get, take a look here. So that one looks like it actually worked completely. So maybe if I do git branch feature, or if I do at feature, let's just do that without the path here. So that one also worked. So it looks like the one rule where it cannot contain the single character. So if I do git branch at, that actually works. That's interesting since that violated the rule. Well, we'll have to look into that. So rather than trying to create a bunch of branches to see if they work or not, sometimes we're just not sure if a branch is in compliance and we would like to test it. And there actually is an internal git command. And again, referring back to my git under the hood course, that's where I do talk about a lot of under the hood or internal commands that we don't typically use day to day in Git, but are still available. And one of them is git check ref format. Now git check ref format is the command that's job is to check that a reference name that you're creating is indeed valid. Now we want to use this specifically for branches because remember there's other references and we want to check that we are checking the rules just for branches because there's a specific set of rules for branches as well. To do that, we use the branch option and then we pass in the name of the branch that we want to test like this. If this passes the test, then git check ref format will return the name of the branch, which we see right here. If this does not pass, if I do git check ref format branch feature slash, let's just do that. Then you can see that one passes as well because we can use dots. We just can't use them at the beginning like this. And you can see then that is going to return a fatal error. And it says it's not a valid branch name. 
So one thing to note is that the dot is okay inside the name. It just can't come right after a path indicator like this. So let's test some more branch names. So we'll do git check branch. Let's do feature, actually let's do this, slash feature slash something. You can see that's going to return a fatal message because we can't lead with a slash like that. If I change this, it's going to work. Now another thing is if I use a backslash, you can see that it makes uh, the command line think that I'm going to continue here, and I'm not. And you can see that it actually worked because the command line thought I was going to continue typing the command. In fact, if I do this and actually put it here instead, you can see that is not a valid branch name. But if we did git check ref format and let's do feature slash something and then at opening curly brace, then that is not a valid branch name because it violates this exact rule here with the at sign and the opening curly brace. So that's one way we can check using that git check ref format command. Now I want to talk a little bit about the different naming conventions that we've seen. If you've been following along on CraftQuest, you know that I'm a big proponent of Git flow and I've covered it here in other videos, which you can check out if you go to craftquest.io slash tag slash Git. You can see all the different Git material that I have here. These are all of the courses and lessons that are available. And in Git flow, we have typically a master branch, a develop branch, and then a feature, and then the name of the feature or some sort of way of indicating the feature. And then we also have release branches, typically a release number, and then hotfix branches with the hotfix description. So that's pretty typical for Git flow. Now we use this forward slash delimiter here to set up like a pseudo path so that you can then do things like filter on those in order to, to find like branches that are just, you know, have fil feature in them. And also some GUI tools like tower will also sort the branches by this uh, prefix or this pseudo path here. These aren't actually directories, even though they do look like it. It's just a string with a name for the branch. Now, other naming conventions I've seen around, like some developers really like to namespace branches with their name like this. And then let's say they're working on a feature called in-app alerts. They'll do it like that with their name or their initials or something like that, that says who it is that is working on this. Now, in this case, something like this would be the equivalent of a feature branch organized by person. Now, I don't personally see the need to do this. However, this could indicate who owns the branch, you know, because we know who makes commits because we can see that if we run git log on a branch, we can see who the committer is. But if you want to see who owns the branch in terms of who created it and is actively working on it, then that could be one way to go. Now, one thing we can also do is filter by that as well. So if I created, let's say, git branch Ryan, my feature, and if we look at our branches here, and I can actually run a git branch list and then do Ryan slash asterisk. And then I get a, a filtered list of only the branches that have this pattern, which is basically using Ryan slash asterisk. So that is one handy way to do that. Of course, I could also do it with git branch list feature slash asterisk and of course, I would have to spell it right in order for that to work. So let's try that again. There we go. And then I would get a list of all the branches that had the feature names. And that's a really handy way of going. The main thing to know about using different naming conventions is that you use one that everyone on your team agrees with and that you also use one that does not violate the rules that Git has set up. And if you do need to know whether it would violate the rules, instead of creating a bunch of branches to see, you can run our git check ref format command, pass in your branch name and see if it works. You could even script it and run a bunch through if you wanted to check for some reason whether those work or not. 
and then you would be good to go. I hope you found this helpful to learn about branch naming rules and conventions. And if you're unsure, you can do whatever you want with a branch name as long as it follows the rules that Git has. And of course, use check ref format if you're unsure. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.